the things that is important for a facilitator of a community of practice to do is to bring together the people who are in the community to have a face-to-face -face talk. When I say bring people together, I don't mean that you have to bring everybody together, but to bring 15 people together here, another time to bring 15 people together there. There are two reasons that that's very important to bring people together face to face, even if it is mostly an online community. One is that they can have a deeper conversation. They can discuss reasoning, thinking uh, at a deeper level than they can do online. And the second is that when they meet each other, they build relationships with each other. And having a relationship, knowing another person, knowing what the other person knows, knowing how the other person acts, helps make the community sa a safer place to have, a, to have conversation, to have interaction, to have questions and answers. So both of those reasons are reasons for having uh, uh, to bring people together offline. Now, the first thing about bringing people together offline is that you have to find what's the topic. And that's probably the hardest thing. So that means you have to talk with people in the community about what are the issues that they're having, what do many people need to talk together about. So the first thing is to find an important issue for them to talk about. Because people won't come together unless they think they're going to have a discussion about something that's of importance. The, the second thing then is how many people to bring together. And I think these offline discussions, these face-to-face -face discussions, need to be not more than 15 or 20 people. If you get it too big, we really won't have a discussion. So now what to do when you've got them together? Now we've brought 20 people or 25 or 15 together. The first thing to know about that is that it is important that when they actually do the talking, they do it in even smaller groups. So groups that are of four or five or six, no bigger than that. What we know very clearly is that if you put as many as 10 people together and ask them to talk, they will begin to pair up. They'll talk in twos and threes, but they won't talk across the, conversa the whole conversation. And you also will find that there are two or three people that dominate the conversation. So putting, putting them in these smaller groups is absolutely critical to having an in-depth discussion, the kind we want to have. They need to talk in the small group, and then they need to come back together and say what the discussion was in the small group, to share what was learned in the small group. So we say people learn in the small group, and they integrate their knowledge in the large group. Now, there's several ways to have the small groups. Um, one of the ways I like very much is to, if we're talking about a, a problem, is to have each person in the small group tell a story about that problem. Tell a success story, tell a problem about where it went wrong. They learn a tremendous amount by listening to the stories. The reason is that a story provides context. It doesn't just provide an answer. And and it is in the context that we learn. So one way is to call what, do what I call story circles. Another way to do it is to have each of these small groups have someone who talks about their problem and others try to help them with the problem. So that's a kind of a consulting model. And everyone can learn, even though it's this person's problem, they will learn from the answers that others gave. So that's a very good model. Sometimes we call that speed consulting. And sometimes when I do that process, I ask them to work on that problem for 20 minutes and then to move to another small group and work on that problem for 20 minutes so that they get many, many ideas from, the, from that um, process. The third way often that I do is a knowledge cafe. And this is maybe when now we have an issue that we really want to understand what's the whole group's understanding. So in this one, again, we start in a, small, uh, in a small group. We have a note taker in that group. And we talk, and each of the small groups now are talking about that problem, that issue. And then we ask everyone to move to a different table. And the note taker stays there. And we start the discussion again. And we may do that three times, four times, 
So now everybody has heard from every other person about what their thinking is about that issue. So we now have begun to understand the thinking of the whole group about that issue. We can then ask the note takers now to, to make a list on the board or we can ask each person to write out a sticky about what they learned and now we can begin to harvest the knowledge from the whole, uh, the whole meeting. If they put their stickies up on a board then we, they can do uh, the affinity diagram, everyone's done that, where they can say here are the themes, here are the major things that we learned. Or you can ask everyone to, to write into a mind map. Some way we need to harvest the knowledge from that uh, knowledge cafe. So those are three ways that we do offline meetings.